it is time for another professional match of StarCraft 2. And what I got for you today is a Zerg versus Zerg between two players that I recently covered in this very matchup as well. And that video, I mean, I'll leave a link to it down below in the description of this video. I, I highly recommend you go ahead and check it out after completing this one. But it's one of the most chaotic games of StarCraft 2 I've seen, period. And one of the most intense matches of a Zerg versus Zerg. So my expectations are at an all-time high. Now, apparently... Our player in blue here has decided that he wants to switch it up and goes for a 12 spawning pool here on Catalyst. Now let's go ahead and get started by introducing the players. Spawning here in the top left hand corner of the map and playing with the red Zerg drones. He's going for a 17 hatch on the low ground. It's gonna be a very difficult one to hold. He goes by the name of Rogue and he's the current world champion of StarCraft 2. Now Dark, I mean he's playing here with the blue Zerg drones. You must have already recognized his nickname. He is an absolute monster. I consider him to be one of the greatest Zerg players alive right now. When it comes to best Zerg players on the planet, I would name names like, for example, Rogue, like, for example, Dark, and then also Sue and Cero. I think those four are just at another level compared to everyone else out there. They are absolute monsters and absolute uh, masters at their craft. Now, I'm very curious to see how Rogue will respond to this super aggressive build. So we'd see a 12 spawning pool into a 13 extractor. Dark will be following this up with more than likely Bane links. But here we go. Rogue will scout out exactly what it is he's going up against and recognize his wait a second. That's not a 13-12. That's not a 13 pool. But indeed, that is a 12 spawning pool. He will know all of the timings at which these Zerklings are supposed to move across the map and he's gonna be in a little bit of trouble because Rogue decided to go for a 17-18-17 there if I'm not mistaken. So basically the most greedy build here from Rogue versus the most aggressive build possible from our player here in blue and that hatchery is already in a little bit of trouble. Drones will be pulled off the line. I'm quite surprised that Rogue didn't even consider you know cancelling that base. Obviously it is a, a very tough call to make whether or not you want to do that. Regardless though these drones are gonna dance back and forth for just a little while trying to take some of that damage. Technically, they could win in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but they're waiting for the Zerklings to spawn, and speaking of which, here we go. A lot of defensive Zerklings now available here for Rogue. He definitely does need to be careful, though, against all of these opposing Zerklings as well. A couple of drones now pulled off the line as well. are gonna try and help out in this engagement. Spinecrawler coming up as a follow-up as well. More and more drones, though, are going down, and that's four in total here already. Keep in mind, the Dark was mining gas. Metabolic boost is coming up right now, and the Bailing Nest is just about to finish. That was only wave number one on this early game aggression. I love this. Hyper aggressive game already though, but Rogue stays alive here with minimal losses for the time being, and now with two queens out, he can easily go ahead and hold the ramp. Third queen now coming up as well. He does scout at this point as well that there are uh, quite a lot of banelings morphing in right next to his front door. He doesn't quite see the additional three morphing here on the right hand side. Micro will need to be absolutely perfect. Dronestone now evacuated off into the main base. Another spine crawler will come up at a very smart location as well. Still, the queen's now target firing down those Banelings as well. Spinecrawler target firing down the Banes too. And it does look like, oh my god, the micro here from Rogue. Absolutely phenomenal. Keeps the majority of those units alive. Now the hatchery is starting to run a little bit low. Third Queen will be spawning here in just a little bit. Spinecrawler now rerouting, but here we go, right? These links are gonna try and, uh, and target fire the base for just a little bit. Now with three Queens out though, I do think that the position that uh, that uh, that Rogue is in is, is gonna be decent, but I mean, Dark does not show any signs of slowing down just yet. Still, the hatchery will be target fired down. Even the Banelings now committed to that hatchery. Zerklings managed to sneak into that main here as well. Hatchery running extremely low, but still, we saw non-stop Zerklings here on that production tab for a little while from Dark already. He's now got Zerklings in his own mineral line. It looks like he will be setting those across. Keep in mind, Rogue has not decided to go for any kind of upgrades here himself. He doesn't even have metabolic boost coming up. Not even enough gas mined for that upgrade just yet. I almost feel like he should start, like transfusing that hatchery, right? Because that base is awfully low. I mean, it gives me anxiety just to see that super low HP base. Still, he's saving the energy here for a little while longer to potentially transfuse that at a later time. This hatchery will start accumulating hit points again the longer that the game goes on. Still, a couple of Zerklings here being an absolute nuisance. Dark is not going to stop microing those anytime soon. Still, though, there's no denying, right, that, yeah, look at that. They do get another drone there for the trouble. Five workers have only gone down, though. Right? I would have lost this game already. 
<laughs> this is the reason why you don't see a lot of cheese at this level of play. I mean, their micro is just so very good, but there's no denying, right, that this low HP hatchery is always going to be a point of conflict here for Rogue. Should he transfuse it right now? It's hard to make that call. I mean, he doesn't have the energy at this point, but he's got energy on one of the queens at least. I wonder if that would be a better option. Still, Dark did now grab his expansion here on the low ground. He's still making more and more Zerklings. Economically speaking, I mean, Rogue is severely outmining him, right? The only point of interest, once again, is that low, low HP hatchery. I always feel like you should go for that wall off here with like a an Evo Chamber and like a Rogeborn and maybe like a Spine or two in the wall, just to make sure that the Queens can hold position. But apparently the Lair has now been started up as well as the Evolution Chamber. So Rogue is going to be uh, selling the story right now of a Rogue-based play and potentially mute us here in just a little bit. Now, apparently Dark has got a similar idea as me. He's like, wait a second. That base is running awfully low. What if we just make a lot of banes and then right-click them into the hatchery? Still, though, there's a full wall right now. Rogue does scout it out here with the Overlord. There are a lot of units available, and it does look like Dark is actually going to commit to it. Here we go. That Spore Crawler, or rather that uh, that Evo Chamber will not go up. The Zerkings are target firing down the hatchery as well. A couple of drones now end up dying here in the natural location, too. Dark, once again, sneaks a lot of Zerklings into his opponent's main base. He's going to try and deal as much damage here to the opposing drones as he possibly can. Hatchery was sniped there, though, but while there are still a lot of drones, here available for our player in red. Dark has now finished up his own natural expansion and he has started droning this one up here as well. Oh man, I wonder if Rogue actually meant to transfuse that base. I mean, there's only so many things you can do, right? He started, uh, he started another Evo there to try and, you know, put up like a second wall. And, I mean, it never really went up, right? The Zorkin just streamed in immediately and he had like a half second to make the decision where he wanted to spend his... Uh, his transfuses. I really feel like he should have transfused that base. But then again, you know, I am me and, and he's Rogue and he's the world champion and, you know, I'm here making YouTube videos. <laughs> no, but seriously though, like that base going down really hurts. Now, let's try and look at this, uh, at this uh, point in the game. Objectively, a couple of pains though. I didn't even see those Zerklings sneaking in there. A wonderful job there by Dark. He gets 23 workers there for his troubles. Beautiful work. But let's look at this objectively, right? Dark, he's at 33 workers right now in two bases. His opponent is at 27 workers. But, I mean, he's just about to finish his natural as well. All things considered, this game is sort of evened up. Right? And that's only just because Dark just barely managed to kill his opponent's hatchery. And that's the reason why you don't see a lot of cheese at this level of play. I mean, only really if he were to kill that hatchery there would he have been at an advantage, right? And he had to push like four times in order to get the hatchery down and even then I feel like Rogue could have played that just a tiny little bit stronger to prevent that from even happening in the first place. And that's one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of cheese at this level. I mean, the responses are just so... I guess deliberate is the correct word? Players don't really, you know, have to second guess themselves with their decisions. I mean, right when he first saw those Zerklings here moving across the map, he knew the timing of the hatchery, or rather of the uh, of, of the spawning pool, and he knew exactly what it is he would be going up against. And from there on out, it really felt like Rogue's defense was really on point until that one moment where he made a slight little error, and then the game all of a sudden went in favor of his opponent. Now, by no stretch of the imagination, though, is he out of this. He's been hiding uh, these roaches very, very nicely. Roach beat just about to finish up as well. A couple of Zerklings do sneak in, but they will be picked off. As a matter of fact, right now, Rogue is ahead, and he's actually now moving those queens across the map. I thought they were just trying to hunt down one of those overlords, but instead, he's gonna go for an all-out assault, even now bringing... Wait, is he... Yeah, no, look at that. He's even bringing the spine crawlers across the map, too. Roaches and queens moving across the map, and is there gonna be enough here for Dark to defend against this. Desperately trying to construct four of those spine crawlers here as well. Those queens are not there quite here yet. Cruise threat here for Dark is nowhere to be seen, which is nice for him, but that Roach War near the front will be picked off, and that means that those will be the last Roaches for the time being here by Dark. Queens will arrive here in just a second. They uh, will obviously be able to once again speed up a little bit, transfusing a lot of those units here as well. One spine crawler does get picked up. Aggressive spine crawler pushing right now though from a rogue. They will arrive here on the other side of the map and they are gonna burrow down. Queens still transfusing left and right and they've got a lot of energy still remaining. A lot of drones now also going down though for Dark and he is now forced to pull these drones off of that mineral line. One of the spine crawlers going down almost immediately. Still a lot of 
have energy here available though for Rogue. I wonder if he's maybe saving that up for the spines here instead. There we go. Still macroing up more and more units. Obviously, you gotta keep in mind there's not really a whole lot here that Dark can do. He did quickly remake the Roach Warren there in the main base, so already thinking two steps ahead here, um, knowing that his opponent was gonna be capable of this push, and it does look like Dark oh, with some split second decision making, right? I almost feel like the highest level move he made there was considering that the Do Roach Warren in the natural was gonna fall, right? The highest level decision there to remake the Roach Warren. He's uh, managed to deflect that push, but once again, right, he's not in a game winning position. Dude, honestly, these guys play some great games, right? The level of play is phenomenal. There's a lot of people out there that don't necessarily like Zerg versus Zerg very much because they feel like it's like luck based. I've, I've heard people say it's luck based. If it's anything, it's not luck, okay? Like, <laughs> the skill level required to micro in these kind of scenarios is insane. Sometimes you will hear people say, well, it's, it's all about that build order advantage, right? Well, I mean, Dark just opened up with the most aggressive build in the book. We see uh, one of the most greedy builds from Rogue, going 17, 18, 17, if I'm not mistaken, and he still managed to hold on there. Now, he did slip up in the end of there, but you can imagine what that push would have looked like, right? The one that he just went for, if that base wouldn't have fallen. Dark would have been in a load of trouble. So apparently we now have a bit of a gentleman's agreement. Both players just simply macroing up to watch the third base here instead. It's funny because we, we've almost arrived at like the, the normally standard like seven or eight minute mark. Maybe even earlier than that. With the exception that there's been like five minutes of aggression leading up to that moment. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have arrived in this mid-game style quite a bit later than uh, that we normally would in uh, a more standard macro-focused game. But everything, you know, if you wouldn't have seen the first 11 minutes, you probably would have assumed that everything would be normal at this point. Dark now going for the Spire follow-up. Not entirely sure if I like that all too much. Usually, right, the Spire is going to be great. If your opponent is not, you know, upgrading roaches already. We see now plus two, plus two coming up for both players. Rogue already going for the armor upgrade and now also the Hydra Den. Hydra Den is going to be super helpful. I mean, in, in pretty much all scenarios, a Hydra is going to help out with roach play. But he can transition to watch Lurkers. He can transition to watch this Hydra Lisk, obviously. They're going to be phenomenal. And that, that Spire play should be countered here quite aggressively. Was it actually cancelled just now? Yeah, he may have actually, Rogue may have actually scouted it. Yeah, look at that. Of course he did. How did I assume that these players would not scout everything? One overseer here, with his beautiful mustache. <laughs> Do they have mustaches? It kind of looks like it. But it did end up scouting the Spire there, and he knows that his opponent is going to be able to clean counter that very, very beautifully. Dark now uh, also scouting out the third base timing, realizes that everything is fully saturated, and once again, right, this is a super even game. A super even game on a much more standard map. The one thing that I really like for Rogue here is that he's going double upgrades. The double Evo Chamber play is gonna be very, very strong the longer that this game goes on. And now he's also transitioning towards Lurker. So we're seeing a Roach Ravager based army here from our player in blue. He's actually going for the Tunneling Claws, which I do quite like. But he's going up against someone who's going Roach Ravager Hydra Lurker. And if there's one thing that Hydras are, are good against, and Lurkers for that matter as well, it's gonna be obviously... Uh, it's gonna be obviously, uh, you know, Roaches. Tunneling Claws, though, could definitely hurt quite a bit. There we go. Couple of Roaches immediately splitting themselves off from the rest. Oh my god, you're so good. Rogue, look at that. I don't even know if he saw these units. Yeah, he must have. Oh my god, he just made a full wall there. That is beautiful play. You will be figuring out that indeed his opponent did go for the Tunnel and Claws upgrade. Either he saw the Wiggle and a Roach Warren or something along those lines. Still, Dark did now find himself that fourth base of his opponent and he will be able to get the kill on that. At the same time though, in the bottom left hand corner, fourth base has also been taken by Dark. So he is gonna do, uh, he's gonna do a little bit of uh, that continuous expanding here as well. A couple of Roaches now made their way behind the mineral line at the third base as well. And Dark will be able to, at the very least, sneak those across the map. But soon he's gonna go up against an army that is based around Lurkers. And that's not really quite where you wanna be. Lurkers, I mean, they're, they're gonna be extremely good against Roach play in particular. Dark. I mean, he's, he started up plus two armor. I quite like that, uh, or plus one armor out here. I quite like that scenario that he's in in that regard. He's obviously in a good spot here economically as well, which is also very nice. But the longer that this game goes on, right, the more value this army here from a rogue will get. Obviously, with some properly landed biles, you can still do a phenomenal amount of damage to lurkers as well. But at this point, does Dark know about the lurker then? No, he doesn't know about the lurker then. I think he would have played this a little bit differently if he knew that his opponent was already switching. 
Fourth base, now once again reacquired here in the top right. In the bottom left, though, it's already mining. Two spine crawlers here from Dark simultaneously burrowing down towards that low ground here as well. You will be able to hold that base quite comfortably. And here we go. There's a big push moving across, though. A big army moving across. Supply-wise, Dark is ahead. He's got a very menacing force. Plus, he's now going up... Uh, I mean, he's going Roach Ravager against another player who's also going Roach Ravager. There are a couple of Lurkers, though, waiting here for the engagement. These three Roaches still patiently waiting for their time to shine. Looks like Dark may very well try to go for the Snipe to watch this fourth base location. And here we go. Roaches now moving across the map. Roaches moving into that third base location. And a whole lot of units now also going after the fourth base. Looks like the Lurkers are just barely out of position to try and help this one out. Fourth base definitely will end up dying. These Roaches are doing a phenomenal job getting cleaned up as well. But at the same time, in the bottom left-hand corner, Rogue has now dealt a lot of damage to his opponent's economy as well. These uh, drones, though, are burrowed underground. So Dark is going to be able to keep those alive for a little while longer. But all of a sudden, Dark is everywhere. He sent roaches towards all of the bases that his opponent has got left over. Lurker's trying to chase down this force. Dark's army supply is dwindling right now, but obviously that does also mean that, you know, he's going to be able to reinforce it with even stronger units here in just a little bit if he wants to. Reinforcing roaches, though, from Dark being sent towards that bottom left-hand corner, but at the same time, Dark is dealing a bunch of damage here on the other side of the map. Spinecrawlers, though, and these reinforcing units. Look at how level, how high of a level you need to play in order to keep up with these dudes. I mean, I'm observing the game. And, and, you know, I'm still missing engagements. That's so sick. Anyway, both players dealing a lot of damage to each other's fourth bases. Couple of these uh, roaches once again going, uh, going to town. Dark is going to try and see if he can, you know, now play the defensive style instead. Something he hasn't really found himself to be into just yet. Up to this very point in the game. There's still these roaches just simply hanging out. They're ready to go for the engagement as soon as the next push comes up. Basically, they set up engagements. And oh my god, that was actually a pretty big loss there by, uh, by Rogue, losing a big chunk of his force. But they're setting each other up for a big engagement, and then they unburrow all of the smaller groups that they've got available. They try and go for all of these double-pronged styles. Now, Rogue, just after leaving uh, or losing part of his army there, he now decides to send a pretty big chunk of his units across the map. Dark is currently maxed out, or close to it at the very least. He's actually making a shove for it. I think this is actually the correct move. He's making a shove for the victory right now. He knows that his opponent's army is split up, that part of it is across the map. The Roach Warren will be target fired down immediately as well. Still, Lurkers, of course, are going to be able to provide a lot of value here. There are a lot of uh, these Ravagers available too. They're going to be able to rain their corrosive biles very confidently. Roach Warren will, uh, will get sniped down here, so Dark cannot make any additional Roaches here for just a little bit. But still, the corrosive biles land on all of those Lurkers. Rogue may have very well just overextended by just a little bit. He will be able to... No, I thought he was going to be able to push that army back, but look at the amount of units that are still left over here from Dark. Making the correct call there, realizing that his opponent sent too many units across the map, and sure, he may end up losing the Roach Warren, and sure, he may end up losing the Hydra then, but if he manages to kill two bases of his opponent, he's going to be in a phenomenal position. And Dark, indeed, is the one who obtains the victory here. I mean, if you would have blinked for just two seconds, you probably, you probably would have not you know, seen what happened there. Zerk vs. Zerk, it's one of those matchups that can be over so very quickly. But that was a really, really cool game. Dark basically being aggressive from start to finish. Rogue being forced to play the defensive style. And while usually players at this level will prefer being the defender, it only takes one little slip up and the game can be over. What a fun match of Zerk vs. Zerk. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And maybe even the little bell icon so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. Special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting me directly. But for now... I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile alright, and I will see you in the next one.